everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Rock'em Sakura, and it's the moment you guys have all been waiting for. Cash is back! Hi everyone, it's Cash Monet! Now we can really actually say that this is the Shit Soup, the review show where we watch season 16 of RuPaul's Drag Race, and our opinions don't really matter because... Cash has never been on Drag Race, and I went home second. So take our opinions with a grain of salt. And this show is meant to be fun. It's meant to be stupid. We're meant to have a good time. If any of the girls watch this, it's not meant to hurt their feelings like Lucy LaDuca did. <laughs> that was funny. We weren't even talking about her. I know. Poppy looks like a Keebler elf. And Poppy went to that award show as a Keebler elf. That is not a Keebler elf. If the Keebler elf would like that was making my food. Well, we don't know what they look like. We just see caricatures of them as cartoons. True. So. That's probably what the Keebler elves actually look like. <laughs> I just wanted to say it's been a long time since we had you here on the channel, Cash. You have been traveling the world and you have been on vacation and I missed you so much. Oh my god! Because. Editing these videos, filming these videos, I truly believe I'm a fraud. Because it's so hard to edit these videos and get them in on time to get guests in here and to like just work technology. And like you have a lot of finesse because we've been doing this for so long. Right. I mean, it is hard. Editing is such a big hurdle. Yeah. That it really keeps a lot of people from doing it. But I'm glad you did it for the time you did because you got to learn new things. How have you been? You've I've been, been good. It's glad to, I'm glad to be home. Back, I really do miss you. I miss everyone here. Like sometimes I did get homesick because there were times where I was just like, I wish I was back home with my plants and water pressure and friends. Air conditioning. And in and out. <laughs> and I was really missing that. What was the first thing you did when you got back? I got Taco Bell. Um, what was your favorite part about traveling? Um, honestly, I did have my like <laughs> moment while traveling. But like, <gasps> I'm here. We call it our Michelle fan yeah. moment because she did a video where she went to Vietnam and then she did a drone shot of her like with a rice hat in a gondola going down a rice paddy. Okay, back to Drag Race. How are you liking season 16 so far? Ooh. I feel like we've watched like m more than half of it has gone by and we haven't watched it together. I know. Which like for, we've been watching Drag Race together since like probably before season 12 because we watched All Stars 4 together. James Mansfield was on this season. The original season. Nine? Yeah. Because I think we were talking about we were like big fans of her and we were yes. excited. Yes, we were excited about her on the show. That yes. was when we started watching it. Um, but who do you like so far in the season that's still here? Oh, Nivea Wind. That's like not even a not even a question. Okay, because she's got good than, taste or because you're Asian? Good taste. Okay. Me because I'm Asian. <laughs> I do like plain Jane. As a like to watch. Like they're entertaining to watch on TV. She's she's a good villain of like a reality show villain. You don't watch a reality show to see the heroes prevail. You watch to see the villains lose mm -hmm. or win sometimes. Or win. And then you get fucking mad. I have a conspiracy theory and I can finally tell you about oh. it. Season 12 and season 16, all the seasons four years apart are so similar. But season 16, Nymphia Wind is good timeline Rock'em Sakura, where I never went home uh -huh. for the ball challenge. Uh-huh. Think about it. So before we get into the review, please, you guys, Cash is back, which means that this channel is back up and motherfucking running. And we, like, it's going to be great. So you have to make sure that you subscribe and like this video. If you like this video, ring the bell for notifications so you get notified whenever we upload, which is going to be every week again. Which is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Comment down below. Send Cash some love. How much we all missed her. All, all of you guys that are like, Rock, you're a fraud. Bring back Cash. This is your moment to shine. Thank you for the job security, everybody. <laughs> also, thank you to our uh, stand-in editor while you were gone, Mancala. Um, they worked really hard to work with me to get the videos edited and just out to you guys. There's a couple things that like I just don't know how to do with Premiere that they do. So yeah. thank you to them. If you guys want to at any point tip Cash Monet, her Venmo is down in the description. 
and it would really help her because she spent all of her money, not on the Philippines, on Japan. <laughs> The, the buffet to massage timeline. You didn't do the buffet and then go to the massage. Let's get into the review. <laughs> so we start off the episode and the girls are coming back in after the elimination. And Megami has just been sent home by Maya to Miley Cyrus's flowers. I love when Drag Race can tie the theme of the runway or the challenge into the track of the mm -hmm. song mm -hmm. because it just adds so much more impact. It makes it more like the, the episode is so cohesive. Yeah. So if you're going to go home to a song like that, it'll at least be memorable. I honestly didn't think Megami should be in the bottom. I actually, you know what? I think that Megami just got the short end of the stick and like with her props and everything, I kind of do think she was either towards the bottom or bottom. So I'm okay with Megami going home. Okay. And, but ironically, it's on the outfit that I like the most on her. Yeah, she did look good in this episode. Well, she had more stuff on. Confessionals with plasma. And she's like, I'm really sad because Megami said uh, top five New York, which I told you they do that. I told you they do that. I just don't enjoy Dawn at the moment. Because she has so many opinions in the confessionals and she's like not doing it, right? I mean, we all have opinions, but there's just something about Dawn that I just don't enjoy watching. It feels like being bullied by uh, Soma gays or being bullied by people that do coke and they're like, I'm better because I'm different. All right, we cut to the next day and the girls come in. There is no video this time. We have a mini challenge which is, thank God you're here for this episode, because we have the reading mini challenge now. Um, I'm going to ask you, what do you think is a good read? What I think is a good read? Mm -hmm. When, like, if I gave you a read, can be applied to anyone and it's a read. It should be specifically to that person. So, fat jokes, no, yes. Um, to you, yes. <laughs> I was thinking that like so many of the girls, they tell jokes and it just feels like they took it out of a joke book. The the COVID test one. Yeah, sh this girl studied for a COVID test. Girl, you read a popsicle stick. And it's just like, how did she do a Facebook mom joke in 2023? Like there was so much editing in this because there's so many of them and they all must have done jokes and those were the best ones that they got to show. Someone had none. Who had none? Q is up first and she says she has like kind of jokes, but she's not funny, which is like she looks funny. She acts funny. <laughs> like her Danny DeVito flipping joke thing. It just didn't have any oomph. It should have been like, it should have been leading into it. You mean, it should have been like, if you had Danny DeVito and put him in lashes, lips, a wig and heels and got him to do flips, I would rather watch that than you because you're so boring. And she'd be like, that's not fair. <laughs> For all the ones that are bad, I just wrote bad, plain, bad, Maya, bad. Next is Tsunami. And Tsunami is the winner. And it was just like picking the best of a bad bunch. They were all so bad. Yeah, the plain jade one was like really confusing and awkward. You're a cunt. mother But I want to suck your cunt. Next, <laughs> for Plasma, where were you on January 6th? Which is, to me, the read that she had for that is mostly just for a white person. Be and it, it's applicable to anyone that's white. Would you see Patti LuPone storming the couch? She'd be like, oh, 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 make America great again. Okay, Maya, she, I could not hear what she was saying, but she got one attempt and then they just cut <laughs> the rest of her reads. Gone. Has a joke for Nymphia and she's like, knock, knock, banana, knock, knock, banana. I like that joke. I did like that, that joke funny. because I was like, that is exactly what it's like <laughs> yeah. talking to her right now. Are we getting tired of it? Yes. Really? I am so tired of Nymphia talking about yellow, talking about bananas. She's pushing it so hard. Like she she doesn't need to. Mm. At this point, it's more annoying than it is cute. She is also kind of giving like baby. She's been very baby. She this is very episode. baby. Yeah. She goes, Plasma has a read where she calls Safira a Philly cheese mistake. <laughs> And I thought that was the lamest. <laughs> you don't like that lamest one? joke. No, I love that joke <laughs> because it was so lame <laughs> and because it was so plasma. People that I really like right now are morphine, plasma, 
I like Nymphia, but every time she says banana, I'm like, I don't know, maybe I'll one of the white people. Or oh, and Safira. Yes. Those are the main ones for me. When Plasma is plasma-ing and she's like Broadway plasma-ing in like the most unabashedly glee fashion. I I love it. Yeah, me too. When she's just like unadulterated Rachel Berry. And she can read. Yes, exactly. So. Not like Rachel Berry. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't really a joke that I would like say again. Like, you know, when you when the reading challenge happened at the bus stop. Yeah. No one. What was last year's? The Malaysian flight. <laughs> <laughs> that one's horrible. So RuPaul says to Plain Jane that the potion has an expiration date and she has three more chances to use it, which is like the semi semifinals, which is like she can just keep it all the way till the end. I know. Right. So for the immunity potion concept, I kind of. I kind of like it, but I feel like it should have been this was the cutoff for the immunity. Yeah, it's only just directed to plane and she is doing such a good job. <clears throat> but my big conspiracy is she will use it on someone to make her the winner. So if she feels like she is second place, she's going to give it to the person who she thinks is first place and they become automatically safe. Oh. Giving Blaine the win. So I feel like if that happens. So she's going to use it offensively? Yeah. Which would be so, such good TV. So iconic. After the reading challenge, RuPaul announces that it is the most iconic challenge. The Snatch Musical. Game. Oh, oh yeah. Snatch, oh, the Snatch Game. game. <laughs> I always wait for two things in the season. One, for the musical, and two, for Snatch Game to be over. It's always so bad, and we do it every year, and everyone prepares, but there's just, it's, it's a hard challenge. I went to the Philippines, and I saw a Taylor Swift impersonator, Taylor Sheesh, and she was killing it. The episode of Snatch Game, do you look forward to it? As a viewer, yes. Because okay. I think it's really, it's just fun, and like, make fun of other celebrities. I do think that a lot of performers, drag performers, are not impersonators. Most people are not impersonators. <laughs> there was a part a couple weeks back and she was talking to the girls and like, how many of you guys have done in drag before, like drag skits before? And everyone's like, no. And she's like, none of you? When is that opportunity to come to us? That's my question. <laughs> right. Well, where, where in brunch were the host is like, yes, and? Here's the scene. <laughs> <laughs> the first person to say what they're going to do, though, is Nymphia Wind. And she's doing Jane Goodall. So okay. do you think that this is a good choice? Only thing that I know about Jane Goodall is that she's on a billboard in Beverly Hills. Is she? Yes. For what? I think it's for AIDS Foundation. And you could you could have her go either way. But like the way that I would play it is I would be like, all right, let me communicate with the monkeys. Yes, God, Mama, <laughs> Miss Monkey, what do you think of the answer, Miss Thing? And then the monkey is just like, I don't know. I feel like it's kind of dry up in here. No. Kind of like your vagina, Mama. <laughs> um, another choice we have is Dawn, and she is doing Megan McCain. And she says, specifically, she goes, she says, I'm going to choose Megan McCain because I'm going to do someone who I know I can roast without any reservations. Where was that? Nowhere. I don't she, even know who that is. Who is that? She's a conservative. I personally think it's not going to be funny because I've said this a thousand times. Political characters on Snatch Game, I hate it. So next we have Plasma, and she mm. says she's doing Panama Pound. Pound. I think that this is a perfect choice for Plasma because I always call her Patty Lapone. <laughs> She's just, she is musical theater, Patti Lapone. When I feel like she's not in Snatch Game, she's already embodying Patti Lapone. And then Dawn is like, why don't you switch it up, girl? But it's like, she prepared for this. Yeah. And then she didn't choose to do the Broadway but, character yeah. in SNL. And then she had to be Julie Andrews. It feels like it's like light trying to sabotage. Right. Just a little bit She's of She's like, light. switch it up. But also she has two wins. So. Switch it up. How about you? Well, I won. <laughs> right. Loser. <laughs> up is Tsunami. And she references Trinity the Tuck Taylor. She's like, she did the devil and doing the characters where you don't have to do them verbatim and you can pull them out of your pocket. 
will make, give you a lot more freedom to be funnier. So she chooses the tooth fairy because she's she's basically saying, like, I can improv this character and make it funny. And from those of us watching at home. No, you can't. <laughs> she didn't put any depth into the character. I wish she didn't. But I also don't know, like, who would she choose? She we was, didn't really learn much about Tsunami in the show. Those girls kind of saying what they're going to do. A legend walks into the workroom. Chad Michaels is Cher. <laughs> Cher. Mr. Chad Michaels walks into the workroom <laughs> and she's she like, she show. it took, there was so much fucking traffic from Malibu because these fucking Los Angeles natives don't know how to fucking drive. Taller than RuPaul. She's ridiculously tall, but she's there to give them advice because <laughs> they're stupid. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Morphine is going to do Anna Delphi, who is someone who is really dominating the news at the moment and was like a professional con artist. I, I feel like this is a catch me outside choice mm. where it's like vegan lady, vegan lady, where it's like fleeting Internet niche humor for right then and there. Um, Plain Jane says she's going to do Yelena Kauska. I have no idea who that is. Um, but the picture that they showed, like, I don't know who that is. And I assume that it's going to be funny and have a Russian accent. Maya chooses. She like she's going to do Tiffany Wait, Pollard. You spelled Maya wrong. Is that not how you spell it? No, I've been spelling Maya like this the whole time. It's wrong. Well, if her Instagram wasn't called Queen of Flips, maybe we would know how to spell her name. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Spell Maya. M. A. No. A? There's no A? M. I'll give you the second letter. M. H. M. H. A. <laughs> Wrong. No! Okay. M. H. I. Why? Ah. Apostrophe. No! <laughs> she wants to do Tiffany Pollard initially, and then they were thinking, they were saying like, oh my God, you should do blah, 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 housewife. And Safira's like, everyone knows her. And then Cash and I both turned to each other and we're like, we don't know. I don't know who that oh, is. Nice. Every time someone does a housewife, I don't know who that is. And I don't know why it's funny. Also, I like how RuPaul was like, why don't you think about like a friend back home and like <sighs> take their personality and not be yourself? Why don't you embody one of your friends who are not here, who I should have casted, who are more funny than you, <laughs> who are louder, who are probably prettier, and I want here right now. Right, do that. Um, and Safira chooses to do James Brown. And I think that James Brown is a great choice, especially because like Little Richard was a good choice because like an overly flamboyant Mm -hmm. Like man in pop is a great choice for the snatch game, especially if you're going to choose a male character. Yeah. Like she seems to know a lot of stuff about James Brown. And RuPaul also says her first concert was a James Brown concert. And Sophia was like, from 1902, I remember <laughs> I was there. So we have snatch game. The placement in snatch game really does matter. Oh, truly. Um, they the, always put their favorites closer to RuPaul, like the people that they think are going to be do really good. Someone did a, a, a mathematical statistic based on how you're going to win if you're sitting on snatch game. Never sit in the second seat. That's where Zunami was. If you sit last or close to RuPaul on the bottom level, then you'll do really well. Yeah. And honestly, it happened again. How do you feel about the pit crew being there? Bad. I hate them too. The first thing when they talked to them, what did they say? They said something to the pit crew and the pit crew was like, skilling. <laughs> like his voice was like, not like <laughs> no phlegm. There's like phlegm in there or something. <laughs> uh, let's go through them one by one. First off, in the first seat, we have Amelia Earhart, who's played by Q. Um, I thought this was weird and I thought this was towing the line between funny and not funny because I liked Q, though. Agree to disagree. She was extra shiny. Was that part of the choice in Amelia Earhart? Yeah, historically, she was very shiny. That makes sense. <laughs> okay, and in the second seat, we have Tsunami Muse, and she is the Tooth Fairy. Yep. And I, I like the outfit. It's cute and stuff like that, but she didn't play up anything with the teeth. She wasn't like, my name's the Tooth Fairy. I'm searching for bones. Bones. Well, she made this like character that was like more of like a boss lady, but then 
Yeah, it didn't go anywhere. And the, the boss lady, boss ladies aren't funny. They're, we're like work, but we're not like ah, right. boss. Next up, we have Jane Goodall, who is played by Nymphia. And she is getting a lot of crickets in the editing. Yeah. But her makeup? It was like creepily it was really good. good. Her <laughs> makeup was so good. Her actual mannerisms as Jane Goodall were kind of spot on. But like regular Jane Goodall in the forest with the monkeys is not cracking jokes. So you no. have to imagine that Jane Goodall and then they put her on open mic night. <laughs> her and a monkey and then someone points a gun straight to her forehead and then they say, no, not her forehead. They point a gun straight to the chimpanzee's forehead and then they say, I killed this monkey and every other chimpanzee if you don't tell a fucking good ass set. That's how you have to kind of play her. Asians doing bad at snatch game. Is so that real. that is everyone except for Juju B. Sheer Cootery. <laughs> no. I will never forget that. Mm. I think this character was a great idea. It was just not executed well. Right. But maybe RuPaul just really doesn't like animals, humanitarians, or documentaries because it's the same thing with something Wong doing David Attenborough. Mm. Asians doing old, old British, white people. Old British people. It's weird that it happened is twice. This <laughs> <laughs> of the top row, we have Dawn, who is playing Megan McCain Trainer, Mom. <laughs> Megan McCain Trainer. Ew. Was there any even any political jokes that she said? Mm -mm. So I wasn't even laughing at that. No, there was nothing, 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 nothing. Mm. Favorite person seat, favorite interacting seat, James Brown, played by Safira, was so funny. So good. Was so funny. Character shoes. I know, I wear no character shoes. That's funny that RuPaul even like pointed that out and said, "You're wearing that last week." You were wearing your character shoes. Like, I wasn't here last week. <laughs> she's still answering as James Brown. Who are you talking about? I ain't never <laughs> been here. I was, last time I saw you was in 1969. <laughs> RuPaul doing snatch game. She does not do yes and. Mm. She does the cardinal sin of improv, and she goes, "No, you're wearing them." <laughs> And she's like, I ain't wearing, no, I ain't wearing them. She goes, yes, they're right there on your feet. <laughs> okay, so next is plasma. <laughs> we just can't. She just, it's just her. Gay that does Patti LaPone oh. on TikTok. Oh, yeah. She's so good that I was like kind of expecting that level of Patti LaPone. She does a decent job portraying her, but there's no jokes. And I feel like there were a lot of jokes that she missed that kind of went over her head. And Plasma is she's a funny girl. So the fact that she missed those jokes was kind of funny weird. girl. I think she's funny. Wait, isn't that that Broadway show funny girl? <laughs> Oh, uh -huh. hairspray. Uh -huh. <laughs> but next up is Anna Delvey, um, who is the one that we didn't know, who is the con artist. I didn't know that at all. Morphine looked like she worked at Mac. I think this is the least amount of makeup we've <laughs> ever seen Morphine in on this season. <sighs> okay, next up is M.H. I... I Apostrophe. <laughs> Y-A-H. No H. And she is Shatrina. Trina's. She's Trina's cousin, who I don't know who Trina is either. But basically, she's using this as an opportunity to play a character that she's made up that's very, like, bougie. And yeah, kind of like this, like, party girl in Miami. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, like, I mean, good for her. It was, it was pretty funny. Right. We should be glad. We should be... We should be thanking God's green earth that she didn't do anything else. Right. We should be watchable. <laughs> Maya, every time she's in the confessional, she's like, oh, damn, now we got to do improv. Now we got to do impersonations. I've never done that. And it's just like she says that about everything. She only flips. She, <laughs> she is. She, that's all she does. That's all she does. She came out flipping, girl. She was raised by Oops. pancakes, girl. <laughs> And last up, we have Lelena Carliush, who I don't, I wrote it phonetically. <laughs> um, and it is played by Plain Jane, and she is funny again. She She's is definitely funny. using her, like, her background to her advantage. Yeah. Even though that we didn't know who this character was, mm -hmm. the way that she answered and her accent. You're, no, because you're a very ugly <laughs> yeah. man. 
was very successful. After Snatch Game, it is Elimination Day and they are starting to get ready. First, we have Safira and Tsunami talking at the mirror. Mm -hmm. And Tsunami's like, I don't think I'm in the bottom. And then Safira's like, like, yes, you is. She's like, you're so optimistic. And I love that about you. <laughs> and I'm gonna take that line because that's so funny. What Safira has done so far in the show is she has helped so many girls. She is very helpful because she's not threatened by them. And, uh, and she is mother. Yeah, she's totally she mother. mother. If you're there and you're like, don't put that energy in the air, like you have to be cautious. She's your friend is looking out. For right. You. Plain Jane has immunity and snatch game. This is the challenge where you get on your knees and you drink the thickest, globbiest, rankest Arby's tasting white Russian you've ever tasted in your life. All the girls around her that think that they're going to be in the bottom are like, and like nymph, like morphine and nymphy are doing that. First off, you know, plain Jane, <laughs> right? She's not. There's use it no on way. It's so funny that they even think about it. Right. They even think about it for a second. But I get it. When you're desperate, you're desperate. Nymphia had the safety if she won the lip sync the first two weeks. Oh. Do you think she would have used it by now? Or would this be her chance? I think this would be her chance. Because she so kind of knows that she's in the bottom. Mm -hmm. Nymphia talks a little bit about Taiwan. They ask, like, what's the gay scene like in Taiwan? And Taiwan is the first place in Asia to legalize gay marriage. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate kind of her giving us that perspective there. Not a lot of Asian countries. It's kind of like they're not like actively against gay people, but it's a very much like shame on your family right. and like an unspoken, unspoken shame, you know, very Asian. Just don't talk about it. And while we're talking about countries and where it's great to be openly gay, Jane says that she can't go back to Russia. Right. Because she's doing drag right now mm. and she's gay and so much happens in Russia. Like a lot of shit does happen in Russia. It's really, really bad. And they say like it's not illegal to be gay. You can't like influence younger generations minds. It's like the whole country is don't say gay. What do, what do they do in Russia? She can't go by the Kremlin with a mm. with a with a fur hat and be like she can't ride a polar bear on have a unicycle you there's a rumor in saint petersburg <laughs> have you heard it's anastasia and whenever safira has something heartfelt to say i'm listening because she's a good storyteller she's adopted and we learned that when she came out her father was not happy mm -hmm. about her being gay and i think about that like she was literally adopted so people chose to like take care of this person regardless mm, they chose mm. to like pick this person up and like take care of them and then then they find a fault later and they don't want to do it anymore yeah it just it, it breaks my heart mm -hmm. um she does get a little bit of um a redemption though her father comes to see one of her shows and he loves it the mma dads who fucking hate it and they're like you're you're a dumb stupid faggot playing jane i'll be dad when they finally go and see a show they love it yeah they love it. The reason they don't want to go, they're chasers. Fear of being turned on. The worst thing I could ever hear about my child is they're gay. But then the mom, her mom said, the worst thing I hear about my child is that they're dead. And that's so true. Like, if you're a parent, wouldn't you rather have your child alive and happy than mm -hmm. dead and not? Yeah. She said, gay son or dead daughter? So if you guys are new here, first off, Welcome again to the Shih Soup. We don't do runways here like a Tudor boot situation. No, we do something so stupid, so utterly ungodly stupid every single time that most people dare not speak about what they see on the show after they leave. Right. This episode runway is based off of dances. Okay. So we are judging these runways on what rhythm game this could be in. Uh, do you like rhythm games? Oh, I love rhythm games. What's your favorite? Um, I mean, a classic is DDR. Dance Dance Revolution. Mm -hmm. But if I'm just home, it would be Rhythm Heaven. Oh, I love Rhythm Heaven. Um, my favorite rhythm game is Pop and Music, mm -hmm. which is like one of those ones that's like really popular in Japan, but no one really knows about it here. So I feel like someone's going to be popping music. <laughs> and there's other rhythm games, too, besides ones from Bemini style. There's a Guitar Hero. 
There's rhythm games from Leapfrogs. Shall we? Let's get into the runways. <laughs> Look at the room. The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. <laughs> the Bluetooth device is connected us uh, successfully. Connected us uh, success successfully. The rune way. You're going to go with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Everyone else, see, I like that cash is here because everyone else has been like, that's a great idea. This is the friend you want. This is the friend that's going to tell you you're going to go home. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't want to say sensible because her hair her is leg, not sensible. Yeah, her legs are out. I um, think that I like this look, but the hair and the body are two completely different things. Mm. Cut. Was it last week where she was wearing like different fabrics and it was like really weird? Do you yes. Remember that week? It was. Jackie said it was like here and then here and then here were all different outfits. Right. Okay, so first up we have Q and she is in a robot inspired outfit. Like just the woo, woo, Just woo. okay, see so that's the runway. The runway is dancing moves. So she's doing Oh, it's dancing moves. She's doing the robot. Okay, that makes sense. I'm glad that she chose different colors. No, I was gonna say I'm glad she did a dance move that she can actually do. Because the robot is very, like, white culture. Because you don't see the robot in, like, other kind of dances other than weddings. She could have done, like, the chicken dance and then come out in the chicken Wait, that would have been so good for a runway. I feel like that's um, what Amanda would have done. Another egg. She... Births from the robin egg. <laughs> and it's a the full storyline. We missed it. We missed uh, the full storyline. I don't like the colors. <laughs> they're, they're very clashy. I don't like the colors, but I do admire that she used colors. Yeah, I guess so. It's not bad, but I honestly, when I look at Q's drag, I feel like she needs something of a bang piece all the time. Because if she's just face and then to the ponytail... Something about the proportion of her makeup and her face just does not work for me. She looks like Bob's <laughs> robot outfit from the roller skates. No, runway. she does not. <laughs> it, There's too much color in this. Well, minus the color. Just it reminds me of that. Rhythm game. What do you think this is? What is that game you play? Pop and music. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely feels like pop and music in a sense where like all the characters in there have to pop on screen because there's like, no, not 75. I'm sorry. 750 different characters. And so her color palette definitely reads. Yeah. And it's goofy. And those characters are very goofy and cartoonish. And I definitely feel like it's that. Good thing a pretty girl did salsa because you come out with a jar of salsa. Two on the nose. Also a mandatory meeting. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm a chip. Mm. So this is a salsa outfit. And that's it. Yep. I think it's very pretty. It looks good on her, but it doesn't have an oomph. I don't mind. The, no, I do mind this, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's just a salsa outfit. I feel like a rhythm game that this could be is not like a video game. This is the wave. When people do the wave, <laughs> this is like, all right, everyone, we're going to do the wave. Oh, easy, boring. I think she's giving me... Bop it. And so she, she has like a handle and also like her head is like the button. <laughs> yeah. And like Bop it has some stuff that like kind of moves around and yeah, wiggles and twists. And yeah. Like, yeah. Her face I, is I definitely like she, Bop it. I feel like she can do all that. She's definitely Bop and she's definitely it. And she's definitely. I, I actually so agree. I think this is Bop it. Okay, next up is Nymphia Wind, and she is in a really gorgeous conceptual outfit, very avant-garde. Um, she's in a, a version of Buto, which is a Japanese dance that I know nothing about. She says it's a dance that happened... That's it's post-World War II. A reaction to... Oh, oh, it was... She said she related it to ballet. Um, I think this outfit is really gorgeous. I think it's so unique, and I feel like the way that she styled it, she is so editorial. And it's such like a um, unexpected silhouette. What game is this outfit? There's lots of leaves. Maybe it's something in the fall. I don't know. Is I it... don't know why it's giving me Guitar Hero because it's like very grungy. You know what? If we go off of that, this is Guitar Hero, even though it's a Japanese dance. <laughs> if I'm thinking of like Guitar Hero now, someone's old guitar hero guitar Aww. sitting in a pile of leaves in their backyard in like wet 
rainwater just <laughs> accumulating mold. Just Guitar Hero in 2024. Yes, that's a tragedy. <laughs> right. A full tragedy. Jack Black edition. This is the one that has Jack Black in it. Did you know they're making a Kung Fu Panda 4? Yeah, but none of the Furious Five are in it. What? Lucy Liu's not in it? Lucy Liu's not in it. Angelina Jolie's not in it. Okay, so next up is Yan, and she is serving a polka <laughs> outfit. polka e outfit, and it's very polka e outfit-y. This is kind of the most boring outfit we've seen her in. Um, I do wish <clears throat> that the skirt was just a little bit shorter. I know, but it's she not supposed also... to be slut polka. I but it is drag. It's it's <laughs> supposed to be polka, not. Polka. Um, I mean, you could drag it up. Right? Yeah, I definitely think that this. I, a lot of these outfits are missing the drag it up element, which you know what? I admire Q's outfit even more now because she changed the colors. It's right. not like verbatim a robot. I feel like this. I mean, it's okay. It's serviceable. This is definitely safe. This is. The Clefairy Classroom. <gasps> go Clefairy. <laughs> and then she goes, fuck you, bitch. You stupid ass bitch. And that's what Dawn does in the show. Oh, yeah, you're right. Um, actually, this is totally the Clefairy thing because it looks innocent, but it will beat you down. Okay, next up is Safira, and she is doing majorette dancing and she did it for drag you and i love that she chose this that would be my only reason for coming to school would be the promise of maybe seeing a majorette dance i also just <clears throat> realized that drag you meant like drag Drag university like drag you the show drag you was like also drag y-o-u like they're dragging you like i just is that the name of the show, too? Like, is that the point? Yes. Oh, I, I just got yes. that. I, I like this outfit on her. I think it moves really well. This is drag compared to everything else that we've seen. Mm -hmm. It's very, very drag and very, very fun. Rhythm game wise, I have a clear concept in my head, especially with the color and the asymmetry of it all. The holes that don't make any sense in any of the places. The big dramatic hair. This is Final Fantasy the rhythm game. What? This is the rhythm game Final Fantasy. They had a rhythm game? Yes. There's a full Final Fantasy rhythm game. And you just you just play through like the soundtracks of the game as the characters in like Chibi version. Okay, so next up is Plasma and she is doing Plasma. Tap. She is and I, when I say like she ground up the cast of Glee and injected it <laughs> into her fucking bones. I was right. You were right. And um, she's either going to pick tap or she's going to pick um, Fosse, like Fosse's style mm. of dance. And the people do the flips in the subway. Uh, that would have been very on brand. That would have been New York. Isn't she from New York? Yeah, but her brand is Broadway. Oh. And I love old lady granny drag. Don't get me wrong. But this is not flattering to her. And her downturned hat. Um, also gives me a weird silhouette. What is that? A, I just really don't like this outfit, even There's, if it is accurate. There are so many other tap <clears throat> outfits she could have referenced. Yeah. I don't know why this one. I did like that she did tap. Like, that's fun. Yeah, that is such a <laughs> talent. And she's like, she's like, I got more talent. Yeah, more talent again. And you know what? That is what makes Plasma so endearing to me. Because Cash and I, were, when she was away, we were talking on Zoom and said... She is like, Filipino people are so cringe. And to be cringe is to, to be, be free. free. And Plasma <laughs> is free. <laughs> she is truly She's free. She's so free. She's Dance, Dance Central. Central. And, and she specifically a Megan Trainor song. <laughs> She's, I give you all about lips that bass. Lips are moving. Back. My lips are moving. And then they do a tap thing. Da -da -da -da. This is very Megan Trainor. Well, she could also just be Just Dance. No, I have to add that extra bit. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is Morphine. Um, she's in a flamenco outfit. Um, I like it. I mean, it is a flamenco outfit. I, I think this is gorge. The, the back is lined really well. I think she looks pretty in it. Red is definitely her color. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of comparing it because like Zunami's was a salsa outfit. <laughs> like this is a flamenco outfit. I mean, a lot of the ballroom people, there's a lot of makeup. painted like whores. <laughs> a lot of makeup there. Yeah. 
What is this giving you rhythm game wise? <laughs> Not only it's giving me Dance Dance Revolution, but it's giving me Dance Dance Revolution Disney. And you're I was gonna say Minnie Mouse. I was gonna that. say Dance Dance Revolution, the Mario edition, <laughs> and you're playing as Mario. <laughs> okay. They're both red things, but I definitely think the Minnie Mouse one is absolutely yeah. correct. And I think there is a flamenco version mm. on the Dance Dance Revolution Disney version. Coming up next is Maya, and she is in a pirate-inspired ketchup and mustard look. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Carson Gressley says, but she is doing 90s hip-hop. I am not getting 90s hip-hop from this. Really? I like this. I, I don't like it because mm. I feel like the bodysuit should have been a shirt. Yeah. I feel like it should have been like a really big shirt because when I think of like 90s hip hop, I think of giant shirts. Mm. I think of airbrushing. I feel like this is very like salt and pepper. I mean, I'm not too big on 90s hip hop, so maybe you're right. But to me, it just doesn't. If this here had no context, I would not understand it was 90s hip hop. What I read is at Roscoe's, Maya's designer didn't make, was supposed to make six outfits, wasn't able to. But only got like two in. Fuck. And I think this was one of them. Um, I think this is okay. I think this is one of her better looks. I also said, I also wrote that this is the, my favorite look of hers. A ketchup and mustard <laughs> rhythm game. Is it like one of those rhythm heaven ones where you're making the burger? Or oh, this is a WarioWare quick rhythm game. Where it's like, yeah, it is giving very WarioWare, this which is, I don't mind. I like that. This is WarioWare where a nose is involved and it goes, <laughs> hit you. Because it's very like bright, like it's very like primary color. And it's Wario colors. Yeah. How does, don't pause how it does there. playing Jane have abs in the back of her no, body? Don't even. <laughs> Okay, so last up is Plain Jane. Jane. Do you call her by Plain or do you call her Jane? I, I say Plain Jane. So you don't like, you're like, hey, Plain. <laughs> well, my name is Rock. Anyways, she is doing Latin ballroom, ballroom, which... And she used to do Latin ballroom. Yeah. So she's wearing a character shoe, and which is you wear in Latin ballroom, but not as James Brown. Yeah. Do um, you think this outfit is drag? Mm, no. If we're knocking Tsunami, Tsunamis. then I'm going to knock this one okay. too. It needs an extra aspect of drag for me. Okay. But yeah, I feel like it could be extra draggier. I feel like this is one of her more serious runways. Yeah. She didn't try to it do like serious. extra goofy. She didn't she, have her big titties and she didn't have like a blow-up doll where she's like dancing with yeah. it or something where's the burger finger uh latin finger <laughs> hmm i'd like to see it um okay so what is this donkey kong <laughs> donkey konga <laughs> you think this is donkey konga donkey kong dk Donkey, Donkey Kong, Kong is here. here. Yeah, it works. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the controller works for the first week, and then your controller's broken. Did you like Donkey Konga? No. Did you play it? Yes. Okay, see, I didn't like it either, and I don't like this outfit, so I guess it works. <laughs> so out of all of the looks, which one is your favorite? Oh, I don't know. Mine Nymphia? is mine's Nymphia's because of how conceptual it is, how much it kind of like captures the emotional aspect of the dance that she's doing. I definitely feel like other outfits were more reminiscent of their dance, but that might just also be from like right. a Western perspective. I also, now that we went through all of them and compared them to the dance, I actually kind of like cues. Me too. Because, it's but it drag. Is a robot. And it yeah, is the robot. it's more drag than any of the other outfits. Why? Why did this turn into realness? <laughs> yeah. Um, I definitely, yeah, I same. I like Q's drag outfit. I like Q's outfit a lot more after seeing everyone else. Also, everyone in the lineup is like, "What theme is this?" Q and Maya were just like these big primary colors. <laughs> and then Dawn is just like a simple woman. I am the woman. I bring my drag queen, a sister. <laughs> Before we get into the judging, RuPaul asks Plain Jane, do you want to use your potion? And she basically says, I trust my sisters. And no, I don't want to use it. <laughs> no, uh, they're on their fucking own. And 
honestly, they are. If they had played the game that first day and they had truly given it to someone who was going to need the immunity, it would have been gone already. Mm -hmm. And Russia potion drinks you. Remember when that that was a thing? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Thank God she didn't do that in her (laughs) cell. She would have gone home. We get our girls who are safe, who is Q, Dawn, and Plasma. Mm -hmm. And then we have our three tops, who are Sephira, Plain Jane, and Maya. Which is like, good for her this week. Really, and she's not in the bottom. But our bottoms are Morphine, Nymphia Wind, and Tsunami. I love Nymphia and I love Morphine and I don't want to see them go home. So by default, I'm like, I hope I hope Tsunami goes home yeah, at this point. Yeah. And Tsunami's in the bottom, but she's finally not safe. So like, it's always the, the thing with the safe girls. It's like, the if you complain about being safe, they're like, okay, bottom and home. Oh no. I definitely, it definitely feels like she hasn't been in front of the judges before. We haven't gotten a chance to like oh, I guess you're give right. her critiques and tell her how to change everything. Um, since since basically for seven weeks, she's just been going straight back and drinking. We get to see who wins and we get to see who's in the bottom. Do you agree with who wins this episode? Who wins? Plain Jane. Mm-hmm. I really thought Sephiro was going to take it. I thought she should have won. Yeah. And I, I, I'll, I'll tell you why. Her runway and her character were both completely solid, mm-hmm. where Plain Jane's runway was not as draggy and solid. It was very comparable to Tsunami's. Mm-hmm. So I would say that just, just even for that, Safira should have won. But I laughed more at Safira mm-hmm. because I've heard Plain Jane's jokes before. Uh, but Plain Jane wins. And she's like, yeah, definitely didn't have to use that potion. I think also Plain Jane was also surprised that she won, too. She it was. Well, like the minute that Safira, she said she was safe, she's like... And it's and it's funny that <gasps> Plain Jane is surprised that she won. Mm-hmm. Because if Plain Jane is very, like, self referential like, she's very serious about her drag, uh-huh. she must have really thought that Safira that, was going to win. For sure, so. yeah. She's very critical, and she's like, I didn't deserve to win. That's basically what she's saying in her head. She wins, and now we're basically solidifying her in the top four, and we're just along for the ride. (laughs) We're just here for the ride. That's good. I like her on TV, so... Yeah, she'll be good in the top four, too, to see her at the end. Our our bottom two who are going to lip sync are going to be not Maya this week. (laughs) It's going to be Morphing and Tsunami, Mm -hmm. who are pretty good friends. They seem like they have a really good rapport together, and we see that in their lip sync. And they lip sync to Dance with Somebody. Great song. Whitney Houston. Great song. One of my favorite songs. Here's here's the thing about Drag Race. They very rarely do jovial songs about being happy. In this song, it's more like reveling and like, I'm so happy. I just gotta, I gotta go out and dance with somebody. I think they should use those songs more for Drag Race because... I feel like it changes the spirit of the lip sync. And for me, like, I don't lip sync like cunty stunty songs. I lip sync like fun songs. If you want to see us reacting to the lip sync, you can go down in the description below, become a patron on Patreon, because there is an exclusive patron only lip sync reaction on Patreon. And how much is it? It's $5. For only $5. For only $5 a video. If you can support me, I would love support. Yeah. And if you can't, then no big deal, but you don't get to see it. And don't download it and show it to them. <laughs> because they don't get to have it. Right. Um, but the lip sync is my favorite lip sync this season. Mm-hmm. But mostly it's like the friendship between the girls. They're making the best of a bad situation. And you can tell like the love and energy that they have for each other. And I think the way that, like, that energy created such a good moment. Yeah, same. <clears throat> Definitely morphing a lot more because she had the handicap of having that long dress. And a lot of her moves don't work. She was flipping. She wasn't flipping, but she was, like, <laughs> she was moving. There's a one part that's really weird where, like, Morphe goes. 
<laughs> and the, just the slap is off beat a little bit. But it was so... She's moving so fast. Tsunami didn't do well in the competition in terms of, like, she was constantly safe. She didn't really stick out. Um, but she goes home. And I really... I liked Tsunami. I think she was a very sweet person. She was kind of had the same feeling that, like, her she did where she's very sweet and I would love to work with her. Mm. And if you guys want to learn more about Tsunami, go follow her on her platforms. Go follow her on Instagram or Twitter or wherever. Go support her. Go support our girl. Um, I love you, Tsunami. Um, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're taking care of yourself and I hope you're booked. And that was episode eight of RuPaul's Drag Race season 16. A full episode. Full episode. Cash, what does it feel like to be back and reviewing the show? Now you can say all of your rotted opinions to the camera. It's hot and sweaty. I'm in this Being thing. in drag. This is wet. Yeah. And then the dog was here. The dog went back with this owner. I thought I was going to have to walk the dog in my full <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh outfit. And my wiener is not tucked. So at the bottom of this leotard, it's all to one side. <laughs> But very glad to have you back at the Shit Soup Cash. Before we go, where can we find you on socials? So you can find me on Instagram at Cash Money Drag and on Twitter. But you can also find me here on YouTube. We just did a reaction. We just did an unboxing of the Twice Oishi collab that I got from the Philippines. So go and check that out. Mm. I already ate all of my snacks during this viewing. So. Oh, holy you're cool. Oh my god. So go check that out. Go check her out. And before we go, a special thanks to all of my amazing patrons on Patreon. We are able to do this because of you guys. Thank you guys so much for supporting us. I absolutely adore you. And truly, 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 your donations help with this channel a lot. So please consider being a patron. And for all of you guys who already are, I love you. I guess with that, we're going to say... Talk you later. Bye. Bye. Cash you later.